In the past few years, you might have already seen memes that compare programming languages with things like weapons, tools, or even song, which is really funny and strikingly true sometimes. So I was thinking, what if I compare programming languages with foods? Well, let's talk about that in this video. First, let's start with Java, one of the most popular object-oriented programming languages. Java is easy to understand and debug. You don't need to deal with difficult stuff like memory allocation and garbage collection. Java is also platform independent, which means you can run the same code on any systems, Linux, Windows, whatever. The catch is Java is quite slow due to its nature and also memory consuming. So if Java was your food, then I think it would be pizza. It's simple and easy to cook. Everyone knows it, everyone eats it, you can find it anywhere. And it's usually the first choice when you don't know what to eat. But while it's delicious, it has high calories. So eating lots of pizza can make you fat and unhealthy. JavaScript is a very popular programming language. It's one of the core technologies that powers the internet. Almost every website needs it. Also, it's very versatile and easy to learn. You can write a client-side code on HTML page or server-side code on Node.js or even native app using React. But with that, you also need to deal with the bad parts like variable type coercion, lack of proper scope, and very difficult to debug. So if JavaScript was a food, I think it would be an egg. It's an ingredient to countless menu, and there's more than one way to fry an egg. You can either create an easy dish like scramble egg, or use it as ingredient to a more sophisticated menu if you have skills. But don't forget you will have to deal with cholesterol after you eat it. Python was around for 25 years ago. Now it's one of the most popular programming languages in the world. Python is easy to learn, read, and code. Syntax is simple. There are lots of libraries. If you need anything, just import it. This means code is usually shorter in Python than other languages. The downside is speed and memory usage, since the code are being interpreted at runtime. This also makes Python not so great in mobile application area. So if Python was a food, I think it's a hot can soup. It's simple, very easy to buy, lots of flavors to choose, and quick to prepare the meal. But you will need to eat it slowly or it will burn your mouth. Also, you can't pack a hot soup to eat for lunch unless you have suitable framework. Uh, I mean, food container. Cobalt has been around since 1960 and it's still being used today. Many people regard it as dinosaur language and very difficult to write and understand. But what you might not know is I used to be a COBOL developer and I can guarantee you that around 60% of mutual funds and insurance business in America are still using COBOL and mainframe today. You can make transactions on their nicely designed website and mobile application, but in the end, it's the COBOL batch program running during the night to process it. The reason is not because it's good, but the migration cost is ridiculous. And from management perspective, why change it if it's still working? So if COBOL was a food, I think it's going to be a Himalayan black salt. It's old, like 250 million years old, and it has strong rotten egg smell that really stink and more expensive to buy than regular salt. But despite that, it's a main ingredient for some dishes. And the funny part is, you might already ate it unaware. HTML. Most people already knew this one. Technically, it's not a programming language as it's more like structural language. Anyway, all websites need it to define the structure and there is no alternative yet. Still, it will also need CSS and JavaScript in order to create fully functional website. So if HTML was a food, I think it would be a sandwich bread. A sandwich won't be a sandwich without bread. On the other hand, you can eat bread only, but it's not going to be delicious either. And if HTML was a bread, then CSS would be the spread. You can either make your own spread from scratch or buy the finished one from shelf, similar to CSS which you can choose to code it yourself or use the libraries and framework. Go is a relatively new programming language from Google. It's simple, very, very, very easy to learn and use. There is no need for external dependencies it's also cross-platform support, and it's efficiently fast too. The only thing that I don't like about Go is the error handling. There is no try-catch statement to easily catch the error, 
you have to explicitly check the error using if statement. And that's the reason of if error not equal new meme when talking about Go. So if Go was a food, I think it would be a pasta. It's simple, easy to cook in just a few minutes, and it's a main ingredient to many awesome dishes. But in order to cook it perfectly, you will need to keep tasting it every 30 seconds to get al dente pasta. C++ is a powerful language that's been around for a long time and still relevant. It's efficient and fast, but quite difficult to master due to its complexity. And if it's a food, I think it's a sushi. It takes one many years to learn how to perfect it, but when you do, it's super awesome. Also, you can finish the dish pretty quick. C is my first programming language. It's relatively easy to understand for a middle-level language this powerful. A C program can run almost as fast as an assembly program, and that's the reason why many operating system kernels are written in C. The downside is, it's a middle-level language, so it takes lots of time if you want to develop a high-level solution. So if C is a food, I think it's like a raw meat. It can be made into many dishes, but you will need to do all the work, and with sufficient cooking skills too. And if C was a raw meat, then assembly would be livestock. Writing an application with assembly is similar to fixing a dinner from a live cattle. I think you get the picture. So that's all for this video. Hope you guys enjoy. If you want to see more development tips and tutorials, subscribe this channel to stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.